Oh, you're actually in. There you go. Watch out. OK. Um, so first example, our first thing we guys we want to look at in this one is we have 2 minus 1 over x plus 1 equals 1 over x squared plus x. Now, I saw a couple students automatically get into factoring, Douglas, which is perfect. Anytime you guys see something that's factorable, yeah, let, let's look at this as far as a factored form. So we have x times x plus 1, factor out an x, right? That's a great start because what that helps us doing is if we want to get rid of these, if we want to get rid of our denominators, we want to multiply everything by an expression that they all, all the denominators divide into, which we call the least common you know, denominator. So what's important about this is remember that example where I had the 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus like 1 half? Like when we're trying to find the least common multiple, Jacques, do we need to sit over? Are you good? OK. Yeah. If we need to add these, we don't do the least common multiple as 6 times 6 times 2. right? We can just say that the least common multiple is 6, because these both share a 6. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, please. So here, look at They both share an x plus 1. So can we make sure that an x plus 1 is included in our least common multiple? Just have a seat, please. Can we make sure it's included? Yes. So our first step, guys, is to identify the least common denominator is going to be x plus 1, because these two both share an x plus 1. However, this has an extra x, so obviously we need to have an extra x for that to divide into. So that's going to be our least common denominator is x times x plus 1. And again, now again, let's look at this. Here's 1, right? So again, let's just double check. Does 1 divide into that? Sure, 1 divides into everything, right? Does x plus 1 divide into that? Yes, it divides into that x times. Does x times x plus 1 divide into that? Yes, it's the exact same expression, right? So that is our least common multiple. You could multiply them all together, but then you're going to be doing a lot more multiplying or a lot more simplifying at the end. All right, so now the next step is to multiply every single expression. I saw multiple students not multiplying 2 times your LCD. Make sure that you guys multiply every single expression times your LCD. You, you're multiplying this whole equation. Oh, sorry. You're multiplying the whole equation by your LCD. So by applying distributive property, you got to multiply it times every single term. Now again, now here, there's nothing to divide out with, right? So we're left with 2x, 2x squared plus 2x. So I'm going to apply distributive property. Okay, to save a little time. Here, the x plus 1's divide out, so we have minus x. And then over here, everything divides out, so we're equal to 1. Now we need to solve this, right? We need to solve a quadratic. Well, if we're dealing with linear equations, we would just combine like terms and isolate. But the problem is we don't have like terms here. We have an x squared and we have an x. So automatically I think, oh, crap, that's a quadratic. Hmm, how do we learn how to solve quadratics? Factoring, quadratic formula, or completing the square? You've got three options. Um, we want to test factoring, though, first. So I have 2x squared minus or plus x minus 1 equals 0. OK? 2x. Oh, you're giving me the answer. OK, sorry. Yes. Yes, I subtracted the 1 to the other side, and I combined these together. Those come to x, and then you subtract the 1. I didn't see the bigger picture. I'm okay. sorry. So now, let's look factoring. Now again, how factoring? Oh, that's something you mentioned in the beginning of the year. OK, yes. So trinomials, we know that factoring a trinomial is going to result in a binomial times a binomial. right? And again, we want to rewrite this as a product, so therefore we can apply the zero product property. So uh, we know to figure out what two numbers are going to multiply to give us 2x, let's deal with integers. Sh could we use 1 half and 4? Could we use 1 half and 4? Yeah. We could, but why would you want to use fractions, right? I already told you. I had a bad break. I'm not going to use fractions unless I have to. So why don't we just do 2x and x? Seems pretty simple to me. Then what two numbers multiply to give you negative 1? Guys, it, it, I mean, you're going to have these, but we don't need to go crazy. I mean, if anything else, use a guess and check game. The only two numbers that give you negative 1 and 1 are one. You're like, it's either going to be this or your answer is going to be this. Like plus 1 and minus 1. I mean, you guys got a 50-50 shot, right? I mean, this isn't that. 
Like you should be able to do this in your head, but if you have those brain blocks and you can't figure it out, just guess and check. I mean, you're there. You have two options to guess and check. It's not going to take you that long. So let's check. They both multiply to give you negative 1. However, which one gives you the middle term? And I can tell you without even doing this, I can tell you which one it is. I, the middle term I want to be positive. So I don't want to multiply 2x times a negative because that would make that a negative 2x. And because if I add a negative 2x plus x, that gives me negative x. So therefore, that is my answer right there. So once I now have my answer, now I have a product equal to 0. I can solve that all day long because that's all we've been doing, right? Zero product property. x equals 1 half, x equals negative 1. Awesome. Let's look back at our original equation. Is negative 1 defined in for the function? Can x equal negative 1? No. no, like original equation, right? Forget about all the work I did. But you guys can see that negative 1 makes that denominator 0. So x is not defined. It's not actually a solution. So what we call that is extraneous. OK, x equals 1 half is good. So sometimes we'll include that as a solution and say it's extraneous. Sometimes it's just we won't even include it on the solution set because it's not really a solution. It's extraneous. OK? All right.